Hi everyone! Hello! Hi, welcome to uh, checking out the YouTube version of uh, Cinematic Autopsy. Um, we've noticed a lot of you are watching and have not subscribed. Yeah, so, um, please it would, subscribe. Yeah, before we begin, it would be wonderful if you guys could click on that little link right there. Right, See where I'm pointing? Pointing right there. And um, you'll notice that if you scroll down, you'll see subscribe. So subscribe to us, uh, CL Squared Productions. You'll be able to see our uh, videos, uh, you know, stuff. We, we have lots of cool yeah, content our trailers. for you guys. You'll know everything yeah. that we're up to in the exactly. film world, whether we're talking about it or doing it. Exactly. So let's give you five seconds to subscribe. All right, everyone. We'll see you guys soon. some sort of like you know issues or if they're like uh, any of the characters in this film who all just appear to be touched in the head in uh, some way i think they're all brilliant and have magical abilities this is the greatest film ever made yeah so we're going to talk today about uh toby hooper's um original uh texas chainsaw massacre uh, Massacre. I think yes. that just made it ten times. I want to go back and rewatch it, just thinking about Massacre the whole time. Yeah. Well, you never heard the Ramon song, or uh, Joey Ramon pronounces it that way for whatever reason. Oh, uh, I feel like I have and never put it together. You know what? Because, you just gave me things to do tomorrow. Because he's trying to uh, to rhyme it with uh, "They took my baby away from me," so it becomes Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Well, I love that. You know, which is not how you pronounce it, Joey, but you can't do anything about it because you've been dead for a while. So, you know, that's I true. forgive also, you. Also, I forgive you, too. Also, that's Charles D. Lincoln, and my name is Chelsea Lister. <laughs> he just sneezed, and it was <laughs> Bless you, bless you. Thank you. Bless you. And we are CL Square Productions, and we are here talking about the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say so, that for the rest of my life. Well, there you go. There you go. Um, <laughs> yes, and um, I <laughs> in, bless you, my mother's house until I have ominous lighting. Very mm -hmm. exciting. Very, very exciting. And I, am I get to be the princess of darkness. He is sleeping. Oh my god. I, I think I have some sort of like sinus infection or something. Yeah, you're still. You still got the sneezy sneezes. Because, uh, I don't know, when I've been sneezing, it's, uh, and this is, this is for all the, uh, the ladies, so I'm sure we'll be very excited about this. It's a, it's a, um, it's a, it's not a healthy color. I'll put it, I'll put it that way. Okay. Well, that's, it's, that's great news. Yeah, it's not the color of a healthy person's, uh, mukai. Um, mukai? Yes. Masakai? Yes. We're, we're just changing the game completely today. We are. We're like, you got a dictionary? We're just going to piss all over your dictionary and, and, and mm -hmm. pronounce everything the way we're going to pronounce things. Because we're fucking rebels. Give me a second. Ugh. We are rebels. I think for once, Charles is whiter than I am. It doesn't make any sense. You just feel well, like, go to a doctor. I love you. Go to a doctor. You know. <laughs> oh. You just have to show, like, your tissue pile at the end. You know, well, uh... I I'm finally feeling better. <laughs> I said I haven't had a tissue pile since I was a teenage boy. So. Oh, right, right. Hey, you kids, know. you want to say hi to Uncle Charles? They're sleeping. I don't know if you can see them because it's too dark, but they are here. The children are yeah. here as guests. Yeah, so why don't you uh, talk about the narration from a young John Larroquette <sighs> um, who was paid in pot. What? Yep. They yeah. had a lot of... They, they actually... Um, to be able to afford to make the movie, all of the actors had to get deferred payments. Um, and they were only paid um, once the film was sold. Um, and yeah. then they only they all only got half of what they had been promised. Really? Yeah. 
um, because right. because the production company signed a shitty deal um, to get the movie paid and ended up only owning 50% of the film. Damn. So all the profits that they thought were going to get had to be split in half. I mean, like, what can you do with that? You can't, like... What a, I heard recently the term, like, you can't get blood out of a turnip or whatever the fuck it is. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, there, I mean, I was thinking if I were one of them, did they consider, like, suing or something? Oh, no, like, there was a, really there eventually can. was, there eventually was a lawsuit about it because the movie made millions of dollars. Um, you know, but, uh, yeah. it wasn't, my, you know, um, but John Lowerkett, who did the, uh, narration, and now we know him from, uh, well, I know him from Night Court. I don't know what else he's done uh, besides that. But I know he's like an accomplished actor. But at the time, he had no money and uh, was a young, like, starting off actor. And he was literally paid in marijuana. Wow. Yeah. Now, to, when did uh, they get... shoot this? They shoot this in, like, 73? Uh, yeah, in Texas, yeah. yeah. They actually shot it in Texas in seventy yeah. three when it takes place. Every every one of the actors were local Texas actors except for Gunnar Hansen who played Leatherface, who was uh, from Iceland. He was from Iceland. Wow. Yeah. Damn. Okay. So, okay. the film you're about to see is an account of the tragedy which befell a group of five youths, five youths, in particular Sally Hardesty. Which, why would they say that? Because it just gives away who's going to live. Yeah, they give, away the entire, they give away the entire plot, basically, in this first yeah. thing. So it talks about Sally Hardestay and her invalid brother. Franklin. Franklin. Invalid. Like, I haven't well, heard someone say invalid in a long time. You haven't heard it in a long time, because this was a movie made before I was even born. So, you yeah. know, this is, uh, they use terms like that back in the day. Oh, uh, what was that? Um, I was just watching something too about the progression of like you can't say handicapped anymore and all that stuff too. Yeah. Like you have to say disabled and disabled people are now getting offended by that, which like to each their own and everything is growing and you have to respect everybody's proclivities and all that stuff. But invalid? Yeah, well, back in the day, <laughs> you know, uh, and and they pretty much treat him like one, you know, cuz mm-hmm. uh, everyone everyone's just a, everyone's an asshole in this film, honestly. Everyone's an asshole. No one's really like I feel like a three dimensional character. I don't even feel like yeah. some of them are tropes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um so. It is all the more it is all the more tragic in that they were young, but they had they lived very, very long lives, they could not have expected, nor would they have wished to see as much of the mad and macabre as they were to see that day. For, for them, them an I, idyllic summer I, afternoon mm-hmm. drive became a nightmare. I love that. The events <laughs> of that day were to lead to the discovery of one of the most bizarre crimes in the annals of American history. <laughs> I know the you Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I know you wanted to see that. Yep. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. Oh, I'm going to cry. Um, in, okay. fact, in, in fact, hold on. Give me one moment. He, uh, so talk about the beginning of the film. I figure, let me do something appropriate for this movie. I'm really scared. What are you going to do? No one wants to see your anus, Charles. Anyways, no, that's get... not a thing that's going to happen. <laughs> it says August 18th, 1973. And so the, the screen is all black, and we have flashes of, like, yucky hands and decay and more yucky stuff, like yucky teeth and yucky shit. That's what yeah. I kept writing. You see, so I'm, 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 to, because it's appropriate for the film, I'm just going to wear my own leather face. Um, Jesus <laughs> Christ, Charles. So. It's perfect. Can you, yes. do you feel, do you feel good with your decision? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's wonderful. I, this is going to yes. be a fun podcast. <laughs> Yeah, so, anyway, uh, we get the sounds of digging over a black screen. And, yeah, and then there's just all Look sorts of... What? <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like I'm on, like, a Megal or chat roulette or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hello, I'm Leatherface. Yes, this is... This is 
This is the leather face that gets you in jail in Texas. Um, oh, well, 100%. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yes. So we uh we learned about um there's a grave robbing happening in Texas. Um in Newbury, Texas. Ah, oh go. wow. There you were like, I can't do this anymore. In Newbury, that, Texas. It's hot in that um, fucking thing, man. That's why I only wear no, that I clubs. Believe it. Because you like to sweat at clubs. I mean you yes. do a lot of shit at clubs, honestly. Ugh. But I want to go to a club. Let's talk about that. Like, no, yeah. like, let's talk about that off the air. I haven't been to a club in like a decade. Yeah, it might be time. Well, there you go. Um, I don't break anything anyway. Yes. So, uh, you know, and and we see a fleshless and drippy corpse in a graveyard uh, with like another corpse in front. It's basically like kind of made into like really weird art. Yes, and the uh, corpse I, has the biggest hands I've ever seen in my whole life. Like, the corpse it, that, that's holding the other skull has the biggest hands. It's also very drippy and wet. Like, way drippier and wetter than it would have been if it had been embalmed. So, either it Maybe hasn't been... you don't have that in Texas, then. I mean, I don't know. The embalming process has been going for a very long time. Yes, clearly, uh, yes. You know, <laughs> you know... It's like it reminded me of like how Imhotep looks when they finally like when they break open his tomb in the mummy, like and he's all wet and they even say they say wet and juicy like they were these guys were wet and juicy. Yeah. (laughs) So there's basically like a dozen empty cribs. Parts have been removed. Uh, This is basically uh, the Ed Gein portion of the inspiration of the story. Oh, is that a thing? Yeah, no, because, yeah, it was uh, partially based on Ed Gein. um, Oh. And how he, how he dig up, uh, you know, bodies and make furniture out of them. And, uh, you know, didn't he have, like, a purse made of, like, labias or something like that? Or, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of labias, quite honestly, if you have a whole Mm -hmm. fucking purse of them. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, um. And uh, so certain parts have been removed, and people are coming to check the cemetery. Um, yes, yes. Um, and then and that's when we go ahead. Well, I was going to say um, that's when we start hearing a lot of what seem like unrelated news stories for whatever reason. Um, yeah, it's like shit in San Francisco, shit in Atlanta, like yeah. lots of fucking weird stuff. Yeah, and I feel like I liked the like whole idea that they kept having the. Um, like, the news go on, like, after they have the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and, like, logo or whatever, whatever the mm-hmm. fuck it's called, title. And then... I um, was I was bothered by it only because are a bunch of teenagers on, like, a fucking trip only going to be listening to the news? Yeah, there's no way. Yeah. There's no like, way. Like, I, I can't remember once, like, stopping to listen to the news when we were kids unless it was, like... All right, let's check if there's traffic or some shit like that. Yeah, I mean, like it could be a thing. I know that, like, when I was given my car, someone gave me a car. Thank you, friend. Um, but the the before I figured out that I was only getting two stations on the radio because my antenna for the radio was sitting in the back seat of my car and wasn't actually in place. I got mm. just the news, and then I got um I got the news, and I got country music. And so I listened mm. to the news because I don't like country music. Yeah. You know, so that could have well, been a thing well, in the that's, 70s, but I doubt well, it. Well, that's that's because you don't appreciate real America like I do, Chelsea. That's like the most blasphemous thing you've ever said, I think, <laughs> in your entire life. <laughs> like, the thing, you know I me. There's, that, there's, if there's anything I love, it's Joe Sixpack uh, living out in the flyover states or the South. So, yeah, you know. You love Kenny Chesney. Yeah, I don't even know who the fuck that is. Um, how but dare I do you? Love them, but I yes. do love them. Yes. <laughs> <sighs> but um, yes. So we meet this like like so, green like seventies van. Yeah. So I was gonna say before we go on, for some odd reason, um, the subtitles of uh, where I was watching it uh, spelled Houston as H U S T O N. 
Interesting. See, I did not watch with subtitles because I watched with my stepfather figure, and he refused to watch it if it had the subtitles on. So that's good yeah. When I, I don't I don't know why the subtitles were spelled uh, wrong, but they were. By the way, well, <laughs> I, I, well, I was going to say I think that like you and I do owe this film a bit of an apology because we've been saying for years that her pants don't get dirty. They don't until after the when she gets into the gas station afterward. It's the whole. It's about the well, yeah, sequence. yeah. Like I, up until then, it appears that like they kept changing her pants because they would be dirty and then they would be clean the next shot. Yeah, but then like the last half hour of the film, her pants completely get dirty. But I always wonder if that was. Now I'm wondering if it was because I hadn't seen like the remastered version. Um, Did you watch the 40th anniversary yes. edition? Is that what yes. It? Yeah, that's what I watched too. I didn't know if that was wrong because I, I couldn't find anything else. Yeah, like no, that was that was the uh, version that I watched too, and it was. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm pretty sure that like because I remember them not getting dirty at all. Mm -hmm. And now I'm no, wondering if I it's maybe. Too. Yeah, and now I'm wondering if it's maybe just because the version we had was not you know, like, all remastered and cleaned and all that sort of stuff, and it was just the fact they shot in 16 millimeter that we yeah. didn't get to see the actual detail. Yeah. You know. Yeah, maybe. Because I remember, yeah. like, I, like I, I got upset when I was like, fuck, I've been, like, a fucking liar for years. Yeah. Yeah. You know? But I swear to fuck, same boat, same boat, I swear to fucking Christ that I fucking, like, she never had dirty pants, ever. Yeah, I've seen this several times over my life, and I yeah. don't remember her pants being dirty, except for the final shot at any point in the film. Yeah. Yep. Okay, as long as I'm not alone, because I was thinking, and I was talking to Errol, that's my stepfather figure about this, and I was just like, I swear, am I fucking crazy? And he even was just like, I've seen this movie a million times. Her pants never got dirty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The only thing I, I mean, I don't, I, I doubt they went back and digitally made her pants dirty. Mm -mm. Um, you know, <laughs> that would have been so, that would have been so much fucking effort. Yeah. So I think, I think we just couldn't see it because the film stock was shitty. Well, that sounds good. Also, I will preface this because I'm going to bring it up a couple of times with a couple of funny instances that happened with this. There was a lag because I'm watching it at my mother's, in my mother's house in the woods. Um, mm -hmm. up in Massachusetts, and there was a 30-second lag with the audio the oh, entire God. movie, no matter what I did. Oh, God. Yeah. So, no matter what I did, I even paused it for, like, 20 minutes. Like, yeah. Let it just run. I would stop it. I'd restart it. I'd do... No matter what, there was mm. a 30-second lag, and I was watching it on Freevee, yeah. and the... um, And so there's commercials, and Every single time, like, there'd be a commercial for Liberty Mutual or, like, Aflac or something that would run yeah. into her, into her screaming. It's hilarious. It's so what's, funny. What's very odd about the commercials when I was watching it um, on Amazon, um, it kept doing Sandy, like, local San Diego commercials. That's fucking weird. Which, I'm like, why would Amazon have any local area for its commercials. Yeah, that's really fucking weird. And you and you don't you're not in San Diego. Yeah, no. Nothing none of the, the numbers radio, here. The radio talked about San Diego, didn't it? In the beginning of this movie. Uh, the radio talked about San Diego. Or was it San Francisco? I don't remember. San Francisco. San Francisco oh, damn the it. radio okay, talked okay. about. So I was trying to find a logical explanation, but there wasn't. Yeah, no, there's no reason there's no reason for Amazon to have commercials um anywhere. Yeah. I mean, I'm not commercials, yeah. I mean any any regional commercials. Targeted, at all. like regional. Yeah. Commercials. Yeah, mine were all um mine were all like Liberty Mutual, Affleck, and things like that. And, but it would run into things and it's And then that. and it was like some sort of like stick that your cat licks. Um, like delectables or something like that, it's called. <laughs> Okay. I yeah. want to research that. No, now it's going to turn up everywhere. Thanks, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> so we get uh, Franklin um, 
who is a uh, a disabled person or whatever. What is the term now? What differently abled? What am disabled I supposed to is, say? Dis disabled is the term still until we come up with a new one. Okay. But I was watching something. I think it was it was. No, no, I was I was listening about, I know it's Endless October, but I was listening to it yesterday, or talking with relatives at Not Christmas yesterday, and the, um, and they were talking about how you can't, people don't want disabled anymore, because they work with disabled yeah. kids, um, and that they're trying to figure out a new word. So disabled's on the way out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is wild, but disabled is mm -hmm. fine for well, now, until we get canceled when this goes live. It's still better than in invalid. Invalid. Yeah invalid like, thanks 1970s invalid which is also just like what's funny is that it, you know it's felt exactly like invalid and so people who yeah. are not educated because it could just could just be like invalid brother like what and like if they're not that educated it could be like, they don't know what bastard means like a bastard uh -huh. bastardized child from you know the 17th century and then uh -huh invalid like oh what's wrong with him or something and there's just so many problems with the word no. invalid <laughs> you know <laughs> but we meet franklin and franklin's in a wheelchair let's say yeah. that yeah <laughs> and it's sally's and, brother yep and uh kirk is uh so inside the uh the van we have sally who is wearing white pants white we pants have pants. we have pam who the camera loves doing shots of her ass yes um, and her little, um, I don't even know what kind of, what color that would be, like reddish, brownish, uh, her like or her shorts, her shorts, They're like a burgundy, they're like a yeah. deeper version of whatever's hanging up behind you. Yeah. Um, it's like my hair version of what's behind. Yeah. You. Then we get Kirk, who's kind of, a, I guess the more traditional, uh, attractive dude. And then we get, um, Jerry, who just looks like disco stew from the fucking Simpsons. Yes. None yeah. of them are really distinguishable, distinguishable between the other one. Yeah. 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 And, I mean, if we really want to get into it, like, literally, there's just all this dialogue that doesn't mean anything and doesn't have any effect on the movie. Yeah, the, and that happens pretty much, like, you know, for half of the movie. There's yeah. dialogue that is completely unnecessary. There's a repetition of things that just... Or of phrases, of words, um, and scenes that just go on far too long and yeah. serve no purpose. Like, a, a, anyone is going to understand what you're saying. There's no, there's no point yeah. in a lot of this movie. Yeah. Like, I'll... And that's the thing, is I wonder if half this fucking small talk was just kept in there because this would be like a fucking... This would be a short... If you yeah. left it to only necessary dialogue. Yeah, you don't see Leatherface until more than halfway through the film. Yeah. Yeah, something yeah. like that. I don't know. I wanted to pause it and put down the time code of exactly when you saw him for the first time, but I was afraid that then the audio lag would be more than 30 seconds. Yeah. Suddenly <laughs> you have fucking, you know, Drayton uh, being yelled at, you're only a cook, when he's not even on the screen. Yep. You know, well, that he happened did that. Twice. That happened twice. Oh, Jesus. I know. But so, I was like, Chelsea, you got to just like kill your darlings and choose your battles at the same time. Anyway, yes. So. Yeah. But. So so they're going out to, I mean, really, do we, I mean, describing, you know, we see Franklin fall down a fucking like hill while he's trying to pee and then they're talking about astrology and it's like none of this is important. I think that um, this might be our shortest podcast of all time. Yeah. So. <laughs> they're going out to. Like, I'm trying to narrow it down to what's important. So it's like exactly. they're going. They're going to see if the, if uh, Sally's grandfather's grave has been disturbed. And the local creepy sheriff, men that are fucking yeah. creepy as fuck. Yeah, and the local sheriff says they're not. So okay, they go to get gas. <laughs> yeah. And then they well, never know. Yeah, they go to get gas and it's fucked up. And like eventually, I'm skipping ahead, and then we can go right back. But like, you never yeah. find out why they're looking to go to that house. Yeah. And they never even mentioned that they're heading to that house that's owned by Sally and Franklin's family until that which moment. is which is here the thing they call it the Franklin house. Yeah. Does that mean Franklin's like Frank Franklin Franklin like why like was he named that, after like Franklin, yeah I think that Franklin must be Franklin Jr. Yeah. You know that's the only thing that makes sense. 
But yeah, they're going to get gas, and this gas station yeah. is creepy as fuck, and they don't have gas. Yeah. But we're, but I realize we're, so, uh, yeah, that's the thing. I'm trying to figure out what to skip over and what not to, because I don't really give a shit about the weird drunk guy giving a whole speech that doesn't mean anything in the, the no, graveyard. Um, and then Franklin talk, <laughs> Franklin talking like a 12 year old trying to freak out his like younger sister. We're talking about the, sl- how they do things in slaughterhouses. Um, I mean like that whole thing just bothered me, honestly. Yeah. You know, I mean, the whole but, idea of, I mean, the whole but, idea of killing animals for food bothers yeah. me anyway, but you know, they go into such gross detail about it, and I don't like it. But you know what I mean? Is he totally felt like I've heard, like, I remember being like in second grade where mm-hmm. boys would go into that much detail just to try to freak out people, you know, yeah. but that's what he felt like. He felt like an over anxious second grader trying to freak out like one of the girls in class. Yep. You know. Agreed. So then they pick up a hitchhiker, and um, uh, this hitchhiker, uh, he. I'm just gonna he... have to. While you're talking, I'm gonna have to like scroll to where I am in my notes. Yeah, I took I took very detailed notes about shit that does not matter. Yeah. So, but <laughs> yes, the hitchhiker whose name I never. What's his name? They literally do not give his name. Uh, he's just I listed in, so. in. He's listed in the credits as hitchhiker. Um. And uh, in part two, Chop Top, who's, who, you know, is Bill Mosley's breakthrough role, um, is his brother, who is carrying around a corpse, and he, he refers to the corpse by a name, but we don't know if that's a nickname or his actual name. So, it, yeah, so we don't know if that, like, the part two reveals his name, or we still don't know his name. And it, his brother is just calling him something. I wrote crazy man and I wrote gas station man for the guy in the gas station. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, traditionally, they're known as the hitchhiker and the cook. But um, okay. uh, we do know uh, from, and we know from part two what the uh, the the cook's name is. It's Drayton Sawyer. Drayton. Um, yes. Drayton. Yeah, but they don't. I don't believe they ever say that at any point in this film. No, I also, it took me a while to get Kirk and Pam's names. Yeah, oh, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, the hitchhiker's there while uh, Franklin is cleaning out his fucking nails with a pocket knife. Which he does for far too long and far too often. Yeah. and, and Even after there, there's blood in it. And even as fucked up as this hitchhiker is, they're still really rude to him. Yeah, the root is fucked to him. Don't pick a, a hitchhiker. You know, I actually I picked up a hitchhiker this year, and she was. Don't a doll. do that. Yeah, don't. I, do d- that. I did it in Mallorca. I did it in Spain. Yeah, you'll still get murdered. It's, no, it's, she uh, was she was a sixteen year old wonderful girl, and her car broke down. So, but yeah. like before that, it's never happened before. But I'm like, yeah. don't do it. I agree. Don't pick up hitchhikers. Yeah. I got lucky. You will not. Yeah, I think <laughs> we just picked up Dracula. Like. The fact that you're immediately saying that while the guy's in the car. Yeah. I mean, like, also, you could see before he gets in the car, I assume that the, like, locks work on the van. Like, you could always just lock the doors, even if you decide to pull over and you see blood on this man's face. Wouldn't you immediately just lock the doors and keep going? Yeah. You know, well, I, guess, I guess they just assume that he works at the slaughterhouse. Oh, right. You know. Yes, but don't they have a bathroom at the slaughterhouse? Somewhere uh, clean up. Do you think anywhere in this film is a bathroom? <laughs> um, yes, because you see a bathroom, you see a toilet, and Sally's shot in the gas station before she's taken to dinner. Yeah. Yes. But that's, that's the, a bathroom. I was like, oh, a toilet. That's the, that is the only toilet in all of that fucking uh, county. I believe it. It used yeah. to be the creek, and, well, you know. You know. The Crick, as uh, they say in, uh, the in in Kentucky. Um, so okay, yeah, okay, and then yes. and then they start talking <laughs> about like you know it was like the guns no good. The old way was better with a sledgehammer. They died better that way because people get put out of jobs with the new way. And uh, yeah. then he starts showing off his pictures of him killing at the fucking slaughterhouse. Yeah, no, it's really devastating, too, because I'm just like, it's the 70s, you know damn well they didn't have, like, prosthetic cows or something. 
you know. So he starts yeah. cutting. He start. You know what? In fact, there's actually when Sally gets her finger cut, um, they that was actually her finger just actually getting cut. Um, what? Yeah, they just cut Marilyn, Marilyn Burns' uh, finger because uh, the blood, the fake blood, wasn't working. Holy shit! Yeah. So, you know, I almost wonder if him cutting his fucking hand was just the actor cutting his fucking hand. I don't know. Um, That's crazy. Yeah. yeah, no, apparently every one of the actors left this movie with injuries. And Toby Hooper even said that uh, it took a couple years for several of them to start talking to him again. Because between the money and the fact that all of them, like when, when uh, I'm going to skip ahead for a little bit, when Kirk is... Uh, you know, when he's supposed to be cutting up Kirk with a chainsaw. Mm -hmm. um, Gunnar Hansen was legitimately running a real chainsaw three inches from the actor's fucking head. <gasps> yeah. Damn. Yeah. Like, he didn't cut him oh, with it, shit. but the actor said that he was like, if I had to move, if I moved even, like, one fucking inch, he would have, it would have cut my fucking head open with a chainsaw. Holy fuck. So, yeah, it and was not made... Was this an independent film? 100%. 100% okay. independent film. Yeah. Yeah, it was Holy like a... Fuck. It was a $60,000 budget. Yeah. Oh. $60,000 budget, and then another uh, twenty three for post. Damn. Yeah, and that's where they ended up getting screwed, because they couldn't afford post, so they went to, like, someone else... Mm -hmm. And that person had them sign a very predatory um, contract and then, like, took all the millions of dollars that came in and that became a big lawsuit. Who won? Um, I don't know. It didn't really say. It just said that there was a lawsuit. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but yeah, so, I mean, this movie was made, like, completely unsafely. <laughs> It was apparently, um, I like, le like Leatherface, like, they did not wash Leatherface's outfit because they were afraid that if they washed it, it would change colors. How many days did it take to film, do you know? A month. Okay. That's a disgusting. Month. And it was, um, at least 90 to 100 degrees in the, in the, uh, like, in the exteriors and interiors of every shot. Wow. Yeah. So, um, you know, <clears throat> I'm sure Gunnar Hansen was very pleasant to be around. Um, after a month Why, of How did they find wearing... Gunnar Hansen? That's the question, too. You know? I don't know. Like, like don't know. where did he come from? Like, why Iceland? Like, what? I mean, like, not questioning why he was born in Iceland. People are born everywhere every day. But, like, what the fuck? Like, I mean, how did I they don't find know. this fucker? Yeah, no, he must have been miserable. Yeah. I'm sure he was probably just fucking angry all the time, and he probably smelled fucking horribly. Yeah. Just from having to wear the mask, like, for 12 hours a fucking day. And, yeah, yeah so, I mean, we're talking, like, 12 to 16-hour days for a month in 90-degree heat where his outfits can't get washed. Yeah. And, yeah, so... Has he done I mean, anything since then, too? Like, Oh, God. Well, I mean, he became, like, known for being Leatherface because they brought him back for the sequels. Okay. And then he passed away a few years back. Um, but, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, he was very much known for playing Leatherface. And then he, uh, just like Jason Hodder, who, plays, who was known for playing Jason, mm -hmm. and then the many, many uh, Michael Myers. So um, many. Yeah, he, he was a big mainstay on the festival circuit when he was alive and stuff. And, you know, the horror con conventions and everything. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, he's all cut and deep, uh, the hitchhiker. Um, and, uh, he's all Franklin's, cut and deep. Yep, Franklin's song very, title now. very terrified. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, the hitchhiker... He, I mean, he really just comes off like someone who's very mentally not there. No, he's not. I mean, like, their big mistake was picking him up in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly. He invites, he invites like, them to dinner. He, well, go on. 
Yeah, no, they, he invites them to dinner. They're like, no, we really have to get going. Yeah. Um, they're, uh, they never say where they're going. They never express urgency until this guy is totally, like, creeped out by them. And then I think, I'm not in my right place in my notes, but I think that um, and then he goes and he asks to see Franklin's knife. Or we're past that. Yeah, we're past that already. Because he oh, already started but, cutting himself with uh, Franklin's knife. So, but he knife. has his own knife, and it's a fucking straight razor, too. Yeah. Which is just, like... So you know he's mentally not there, or has not been to school because he thinks that that's a knife. So that's a problem. Um, luckily enough, he puts he like puts it away. I don't I don't know. This guy's fucking nuts, and he pulls out a camera. So this man has a camera, and obviously doesn't know the value of a camera because he could if he sold that camera. Because I was thinking about that camera and mm-hmm. how at that time period that camera is probably like 40 50 years old maybe uh-huh. something like that he could make so much money in the 70s selling that camera but instead he takes a photo of franklin and um franklin's obviously upset about it and he pulls out a thing of aluminum foil and lights it on fire in this closed van which is well, what you do he only does that after they refuse to give him 2 dollars for the picture yes which yeah. you don't two dollars of the I got I got scammed like that in Mexico once and they mm. would not leave me alone for like a day and a half. Like yeah. they found me. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Y- yeah. I had to, I had someone try to pull that, oh uh you uh they bump into you and then they uh like, Hey man, you broke my glasses. Um oh, yeah. but I didn't give a shit. So <laughs> like they just now they just now started like you know putting up signs around Times Square that like you know you're not obligated to tip people if you take photos with the characters and stuff like that yeah. people who are dressed and things like that but you like growing up I remember that like my folks felt obligated to do so because they'd take a photo and be like oh a photo and then be like that'll be ten dollars yeah you know I don't know yeah like I like I had someone who you know as I said like he pulled that um. Uh, and it's funny because before I had heard it was a scam, I would just legitimately didn't give a shit. I was, I was like, well, you need to be less clumsy. <laughs> He's like, no, man, you fucked up my glasses. Nice. I'm like, well, nice. whatever. You know, you better get out of my face. Your glasses aren't going to be the only thing that gets fucked up, dude. And then he okay. kind of, yeah, then he kind of backed off. And then like a month later, I heard that, that was like a scam that they were pulling on people. And, so I, you knew and it better. Was, I it's not that I even knew better, it's I didn't give a shit. I'm like, I don't fucking care if I fucked up your glasses. I don't fuck you. <laughs> you should have been you should have been more careful. Yep. <laughs> so hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, like I just I just I found it funny. I was like, I didn't fall into a scam I didn't fall into the scam because I'm kind of an asshole. Not because I knew it was a scam. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to think that I would like to think that your gut instinct as a New Yorker, like a born and bred New Yorker, is that you were just like you knew innately somehow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. As I said, like I just I I you know if you bump if you bump into someone, you know, and you fucking break up or fuck up your glasses, well then, dude, be more careful when you're how you're walking. Yes. You know, that's it. You should be you careful. Know? Not like he was carrying, you know, like, it, it's not like, you know, he was carrying a fucking Fabergé egg or some shit, you know? It's their fucking glasses. If you oh, bump no. into someone bad enough to break your glasses, well, then that's your fault. That's your fault. That's your fault. Yeah. 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 It's true. Also, also, where the fuck are all the Fabergé eggs? I've always wanted to see them. I smashed them. All of them. That makes sense. I was just in like, eh, fuck your eggs! <laughs> fuck you want them screw? You want them scrambled? Have them! Hey, man, the fucking eggs! T- egg! Take them! Har- egg! You hire, you hire Harvey Weinstein, and he comes in and he jerks off on them and makes them over easy. See, it's, it's a shame you don't It's a shame you don't watch uh, Always Sunny, because uh, it's kind of a running joke of Danny DeVito's character just carrying a fucking egg in his pocket and offering people eggs. That. Yeah, and offering people eggs at just weird, inappropriate times. I mean, like that's. I feel like that's a good thing for people to do. Honestly, <laughs> someone should actually care. I'm sure there is someone who carried on that tradition. Someone who actually actively does that. I'm yeah. sure that's a thing. Mm. It has to be. Anyway, we're so, talking about this movie that we love so much. Yeah. So they kick him out. 
Um, that's the thing. Like, you know, um, you have to love it because it is what it is. This is one of those films that like everybody else, like I don't, you know, I, I, I don't hate the movie, but I don't see, I don't understand what people like about it. Like, I understand how influential it is in movie, in, in horror history. It made a huge impact on, like, we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing right now, say, if it weren't for this movie in a couple of yeah. months. You and know? so like, many... It paves the way. And so many movies have done their own version of the fucking dinner scene. Um, I've been a part of movies that have done their own version of the dinner scene. You know, you know but... But, like, I... So I understand like how influential it is, but I just I don't. To me, it's not a it's not a film that I enjoy. It's not a film that I look at and um because mm-hmm. you know as I said, it's a bunch of unlikable characters who all just act like shitty people and just a lot just waltz into somebody else's home. Breaking and entering. I wrote that too. I was like, "This is breaking yeah. and breaking." In. I'm sure that was still a law back then. You know, no, definitely, that. definitely. Um, so yeah, so they kick the hitchhiker out of the van, and, uh, he's and he running wipes behind his them. blood on something. Yep, on the which band. I, which blood. I think, which, um, they don't really make clear, but I think that was the sign to Drayton that, hey, these are people to fuck with. Okay, I was wondering, it was like, is this some weird, this was me giving the movie way too much credit for what it was. I was like, is this some weird pagan symbol? Is this, what is this? What could this be? No. And Chelsea, it's probably just a sign to like tell the other people like, okay, kill them. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I'm sure not everyone who goes to that gas but station then, gets killed. But then also he's not that smart. Like that man is not that smart to do that. The hitchhiker is not that smart. And also there's no gas at that gas station. Well, keep in mind how many cars are um, are in their pro- are on their property. Right. So it's probably like any car that they see that has that bloody symbol on it, kill those people. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So. Um, but yeah, you know. So so uh, we see Sally. She comes up. Uh, she starts uh, wrapping up Franklin's wound. While Pam is reading everybody's uh, horoscopes, and then we see a man with a severely, like, I wonder if this man is okay. Well, yeah, I mean, it's like a fucking 48, 49-year-old movie, so he could be dead by now. But that dude had a super swollen forehead. Like, there was something, like, legitimately wrong with how swollen that man's forehead was. No, you're right. He had a giant forehead. Maybe he just had a big brain. Uh, if you have a brain that size, it usually is uh, meningitis, and it means you're going to die, and it happens to babies. So, you know. Right. Yeah, no, one of my exes, um, her uh, little brother um, died as a baby that way because his brain was too big for his head. Yeah. Is that what meningitis is? I don't even know that. At least the version he had, yeah. That's what it is, yeah. I always thought meningitis was some like strep throat type thing. Obviously, I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah. So, um, they ask for gas. Drayton tells them, uh, you know, there won't be any until uh, late tonight or tomorrow morning. And uh, they ask him where the old Franklin place is, and he basically tells them a lot of, uh, "You don't want to go to that. It's an old abandoned place. And them girls don't want to go there." Um. And, yeah, uh, but it's, it's his property, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's so silly. But also, it should have been, like, well-maintained. Uh, you know, a lot of these things don't add up. Whereas, yeah. like, if it's put in Franklin Jr.'s name, because we never learn about Sally and Franklin's parents, right? And just that this manor is there, and they used to, they stayed there once when, um, when Sally's grand, when their grandmother mm-hmm. died. Yeah. You know, but if it's put in their name, say, and that's why they're going there, like they should have been given like the will, and if we should have learned a little more about that family and about like why they're going there in the first place, and they should have maintained it better, the property. Yeah, no, this like I mean, you can tell this location is just an abandoned place they found, um, but. Storyline wise, it makes no sense that the place would be this like unmaintained. 
Yeah. Like this looks like a place They're that not no that one that old. Like these people that are no one has 20s. been in. Yeah, this looks like a place no one has been in for like 25, 30 years. Yeah. Yeah, a hundred percent. And we never see things like you know, characters want to go down to the creek. We never see the two sheds that this trail is between. All these things. Yeah, you think that they just like found an abandoned house and shot in it? Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I get the I get the feeling that they were they had the line about um the old house or something, and maybe they lost that location, or maybe they thought this place wasn't in the disrepair it was in. You know, but uh. I love stuff like that, though. I mean, that's the thrill of indie filmmaking in a way. You know, so they tell Franklin, of course, because they're wonderful and they want to get the guy in the wheelchair to, to fucking clean out all the blood on the side of the fucking van. Um, they're horrible to Franklin, <coughs> but Franklin's also a horrible person. Yeah, no, that's the thing, Nick. None of these people are fucking, um, you There's know, no sympathetic There's no redeemable quality about any of them. No. No. So they go off like to go swim and they're going to leave Franklin alone for an hour while they're all going up while they're all upstairs having fun and laughing. They laugh for way too long and about nothing and it's very loud and very fucking annoying. You know. <laughs> it's so annoying how much they're laughing, how much of a good time they're having. I mean, I think like the, the only redeemable thing about that is like it's um it's uh, it gives way or it leads to alludes to that's the word um like the weird chicken and pig noises we get in the Leatherface house uh-huh. but but still it doesn't make any sense as to why they're having such a good time and they completely forget about the invalid brother it doesn't well, it doesn't make refer to him as an invalid <laughs> no because they don't do that in this movie at all um, you know, but the, well, I'm saying we need to be better than the movie Chelsea. We need to, we need to, to go and, and, and be above the level that they chose to refer to Franklin as because Franklin is his own uh, person and his own and Franklin is, and that's the thing. Franklin is just a piece of shit too. Like it's, you Franklin know, Franklin is like, to be honest, like really fucking annoying. Yeah. Like, and he just says the same thing over and over and over and over again. Keeps uh-huh. dredging up same things. If you're going to, like, make him, like, a disabled person who also has, like, mental, like, like uh-huh. incapabilities, then do that. Then do yeah. that. Make that evidently known. And then yeah. we'll be like, it's okay that he's repeating the same thing over and over again. But even then, then Sally is just not sympathetic to him whatsoever and just completely annoyed by boyfriend. her brother. Yeah. And she's you the know, one who asked him to go anyway. Yeah. So they uh, they they see another house. They hear it has a generator. Kirk has the brilliant idea that he's going to sell his guitar for gasoline, even though he's not even holding a guitar. There's no guitar that you ever see in the van ever. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, when they knock on the door and no one answers, then he just lets himself in. He lets just... himself in. Yeah, of course. Big, 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 big issue. And I remember this, is, other than the white pants, this was like one of my biggest issues the first time I watched this movie. Yeah. Is that they just are like, Meh, it. Meh. <laughs> we're just going like, oh, look at this house. They don't even yeah. need help at this point. No, they just walk right the fuck in and he gets grabbed by Leatherface and uh also, so Pam... AAA existed during this time. They could have called AAA and had their car towed <laughs> to a gas station. Ah, but remember they don't have a phone. Oh yeah, it's the seventies. Yeah. Well remember no, Drayton even said the gas station doesn't have a phone. I think he was lying. That that is possible, but um <laughs> so uh Pam uh you know, uh, looks for Kirk when she kind of snaps out of it. We get a, a just a, 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 a like fucking tracking shot of her ass as but, she's. Yeah, uh, no, they love Pam's ass, and this girl has no ass. You know, um, <laughs> I mean, I don't have an ass, but you know, so respect to people with no asses. But like, come on, like, do no. Anyway, continue. <laughs> it's not relevant. Yeah. So. Um, you know, and then she goes right in, too. And honestly, I legit can't think of, a, of any good reason to just walk into someone else's home uninvited. Even if someone else needs like help. If you were, like, if you, were, if you were Sally at the end of this movie, 
yes, do it. You know, you're bleeding out from the head. You're uh-huh. going to die. The door is open. Do whatever you have to do in order to live. That is not the yeah. case with these people. Yeah. You know? And then just she just fucking yeah, stupid. She, she just makes herself at home, starts wandering around inside their place. And then she finds the room filled with like chicken feathers and teeth. And, and, a and very, this is uh, the longest yeah. sequence of shit that I've seen in my entire goddamn life. And it went on so long. Yeah. It went on so fucking long, showing every little thing in that room that I wanted to turn the movie off. And I just I just kept thinking, this is a really unsanitary room. Well, yes, that too. Yeah. That so too. And it takes until this long ass sequence is over for her to vomit. Yeah. Or like think about vomiting. Yeah. So Probably Leatherface so pops out of his room and grabs her as she exits and um uh, I noticed she kicks off her slippers when he grabs her, and I wonder if that was on purpose because maybe he, she kept kicking him with her slippers on or something. I didn't. Sorry, say that again. What? When he grabs her, she kicks off both of her slippers. Oh. And I wonder if that was. I wonder if maybe in 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 uh, takes they did before, she kept kicking him or something. And he, like, asked her to take them off or something. Interesting. Because it's weird that she would kick off both of her slippers at the same time when being grabbed. Yeah, I never, I didn't even notice that. Yeah. Honestly. I mean, that makes sense. Um, so, so, anyway, we're not mentioning, there's, like, a room in this house that has, it's a red wall and it has all these animal, like, um, skulls, skulls and shit yeah. on it. And there's, like, a big metal door that he can slam shut. Yeah. And that's basically where everyone is lured to. Yeah. And, if you uh, haven't he then, seen this movie, that's fucking stupid, anyway. But... <laughs> well, and here's the thing, because, um, it's, uh, you know, because it's, uh, Possibly the Christmas season, even though it's endless October. Um, he hangs her on a hook because really anything can be an ornament if you hang it on a hook. Um, I put that on my Instagram story. It was like anything's yeah. a, anything's a ho- anything's an ornament if you bra- if you're brave enough and it's and it's him and Pam. Yeah. yeah. So um, and he starts running up his chainsaw um, and uh, he starts cutting up Kirk, but uh, that's as I said where he was running it about three inches from the actor's fucking head. Um, so it's crazy. Then, also, it's only 310 days until <coughs> Halloween, yeah, even though it's Halloween uh, now. Uh, so, um, we uh, we now go to Franklin, who is, we found out Franklin has not even cleaned up the fucking man. Um, Franklin hasn't done anything, yeah, and then Jerry, but Jerry is being an even bigger dick to him, yeah. No, Jerry's like, oh, the guy's gonna come and murder you. I told him where you live. Oh, ha, ha. I told I told him your zip code and all that shit. Yeah, fuck that. Yeah, yeah fuck, fuck all these people. Yeah, and then Sally is gonna look for the knife inside the van. She takes a good twenty seconds to do it before giving up completely. Yeah, she really doesn't. And imagine, imagine being me with a thirty second lag. She's already yeah. out of the van and has given up. Yeah. When she says. Oh, I give up. She's already been out of the van yelling at him for Jerry. <laughs> yeah. And then Jerry Jerry says he's going over by the creek. And Sally is like, oh, let me come. And he's like, no, I want you to stay here. And like, okay. She just listens, too. Yeah. And also, it's her family's house. Yeah. That does not make so, any sense whatsoever. You know, and... uh so Jerry goes to the other house. He hears giggling noises that he assumes is Pam, which is weird because if she's in a fridge, you wouldn't have heard those noises at all. Also, you hear like the rustling of of the freezer, and when they open the yeah. freezer, she's still just passed the fuck out. Yeah. Well, when she when he also she gets up and does some weird interpretive dance looking thing. There's so many interpretive... Thank you for yeah. saying that. Because there are so many interpretive dances in this movie. And this is the yeah. first one. No, yeah. no. The first one is the hitchhiker alongside the van going... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Leatherface hits Jerry with the hammer. And um, 
The one part that I like is that Leatherface is genuinely upset that all these people keep walking into his house. That is the only character development we get in the entire movie. Um, yeah, like, I think, and it is like the I, fact that yes, he's really he sits down and is just like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, because that's that's a completely natural response to all these fuckers just randomly walking into your house. Definitely, like, oh, gotta kill him. Like, oh, and, well, I just, I, I also wrote, I was just like, character ve- development, yes, but also, also, like, fuck, I only have two freezers. You know, <laughs> so he knows he's gonna get in trouble. You know, um, and uh, at this point, Sally is beeping the horn because she's determined to kill the battery on the car they don't have gas for. Yeah, it's now and night. Also, the thing that doesn't make sense. So this whole sequence, this whole sequence. Yes, that there's um, no keys uh, and yet the lights are on. <laughs> yes. So I talked to Errol about this. I talked to yeah. Errol about this, and he said during the '70s it was very well possible that you could turn the lights on without the keys. And I was really? Like, I call bullshit. I call bullshit. So I went out to my car because I have mm-hmm. an old as fuck car, and I couldn't do it. Hmm. But your car isn't from the '70s, though. Your car is like from the '90s. No. Yeah, but the um, but you know, I like brought up to Errol right because like he saw this movie in theaters when it came out. Yeah, and um, and he was just like, it could have been possible, but yeah. So the lights are on the whole time. There's no gas. They're bu- like beeping the horn. That's the other thing I didn't bring up too when they're pulling up to the house initially. Mm-hmm. They make that slow stop on the exterior shot of the house with them in the foreground, the van in the yeah. foreground. Yeah, and it's a slow stop, and then they accelerate really quick. That is uh-huh. the greatest way to exert gas that you can possibly do, because mm. they like slam on the gas to take that left turn to go into the house. And I'm like, didn't you're trying to save gas, man? You're doing the opposite by what you just did, slowing down and then accelerating really fast. Like, again, it's for yeah. the shot, but yeah, no. But Arrow said it's possible. Mm. I have to trust well, an, 80, an 82 year old man. I don't know. Okay. With this regard. But, sure. but, but I did test it in my own car when I was on dog walks mm-hmm. tonight. Didn't yeah. work. Mm. Did not. Well, work. they go into the woods now. And uh, Franklin gets killed with the chainsaw. And honestly, none, I don't think a single person cared. I, I know, can't I imagine. Happy about it. I can't imagine anyone, even in 1974 when this came out, was like, oh my God, no, Franklin. Nobody cared about any of these characters. You cared, you cared about Sally because of her pants. <laughs> you know. But that's the thing. is like, you know, and also the fact, as I said, the intro just tells you that Sally and Franklin are going to be the last two survivors. Which... Yeah, and you know, you want to know what's funny is because I've seen this movie before. In my mm-hmm. head, I thought because he's, like, because he's disabled, I thought he was the first to go. I forgot entirely about Franklin existing in the film. That's how yeah. little people care about Franklin. Well, Franklin, um, I remember Rob Zombie when he made House of a Thousand Corpses, which, again, another movie completely inspired by Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, and he talked about how, like, one of the reasons why he gave the killers in that so much personality is he's, you know, he goes, he said, nobody went to Texas Chainsaw Massacre giving a shit about fucking Franklin. He's like, it was all about the family. That's what we wanted to see. Damn. And that, that was literally his exact quote. Is No one went to Texas Chainsaw Massacre giving a, giving a shit about fucking Franklin. Okay, so I'm not an asshole for saying it. Good. Yeah. So Rob Zombie said that, yeah, uh, when he uh, made House of a Thousand Corpses. Um, so Sally starts running, and, uh, Leatherface is after her, and then she just lets herself in like everybody else does, uh, at the house. Yep, and runs upstairs, which is the best thing to do. Mm-hmm. It's a great fucking call, Sally, and she finds mom and dad, or grandma and grandpa. Grandma and, and grandpa, yeah, yeah. Grandma and grandpa, <coughs> and grandma's missing her face, and grandpa looks like he's dead, because that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, he's obviously dead. You get some psycho shit. You can tell they pulled some shit from Psycho in this. Mm-hmm. Um, the which also was based on Ed Gein, by the way. When the fuck was Ed Gein 
when was he running rampant? Because Psycho came out like in the 1950, 60s. like 1954, I believe. Interesting. Yeah. God, Ed Gein. I haven't watched True Crime on him in a long time because I feel like everyone thinks he's just yep. overplayed. 1957, he was arrested. Then when the fuck did Psycho come out? Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm looking at Ed Gein's, uh, uh, let's see, popular culture, 1960. Interesting. And the novel was 1959, so it was still two years after uh, Ed Gein. Life is wild. And you have to remember, like, fucking, yeah. you know, shit, shit like that, that, that lasts in the cultural impact for at least a decade. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, you yeah, know, I mean, like, I mean, like the, you notice we're all still watching true crime. I fall asleep to true crime every night. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know so, so, stories. so, so think of Ed Gein happening in 1957, people would, st- you know, literally about 20 years people still talk about that sort of shit, you know? I mean, I remember, you know, 20, 30 years, actually, because I remember th- remember growing up, um, you know, in the 90s, where fucking Charles Manson was, like, the coolest fucking thing to, like, my little, you know, my little fucking group. And you know? Prison. Yeah. You know, um, and that was still, like, fucking what? Like, 30 years after the fucking Tate LeBlanca murders? So, yep. you know, um... It, it's one of those things that just stays in the cultural in the culture once it happens. I know entirely. Um, yeah, it does. Yeah, you know. Um, so yeah, uh, one second. Yeah, go on. I'm going to sneeze. I'm just like we are honestly skipping so far. Like there are so many little details that I took notes on that I'm just <laughs> like that we can't bless you that we keep like skipping ahead on because everything's just completely unnecessary. I mean, yeah, do you want us to be like Sally screams? She runs a little bit. Sally screams again. Oh, no, not she like run, that. Like, no, yeah, no, exactly. Not, <laughs> like, that's, yeah. No, not like that. And that's not even what I wrote down. I just am like, yeah. like even succinctly, even succinct notes. I'm just like, this is all garbage. So I just, I just stopped scrolling. I'm just going from memory now. So, but yeah. where were we? <laughs> uh, Sally just jumped out the window. The first of many windows she will jump out. I thought she only jumped out two. Who jumped out the other window? Because there's two window jumpings. Yeah, no, they're both her. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it's the first of uh, the, the first, first window, window she jump. jumps out of. Yeah. The first window jump, and she's running, and he's coming after her, and she's back in the woods again, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And and he is clearly close enough to chop off her head with the chainsaw. And then the next shot, he is suddenly like eight feet behind her. Yes, it's clearly like the director was like, you need to run slower. Yeah. Um, also, like, um, I don't know, like, you need to seem like you're more fucked up while you're running, like, talking to Sa- the character of Sally. Like, I, I don't know. It just doesn't make... And this is when we get the fact that she's running through the woods in for far too long and her pants are fine. Yeah. So, yeah, it's literally not until she's in the gas station that her pants are suddenly dirty. It's true. So she runs to the gas yeah. station. She meets um, the cook. And yeah. The... In fact, in yeah. fact, I will say, she jumps out of the, um, she jumps out of the window. Her pants are grass-stained and ripped. Mm-hmm. The next shot when she's running, they are no longer grass-stained. Yep. It's not until she's in the fucking uh, gas station that they are that they are stained again. Yep, correct, correct. And this is where we learn that the cook is a part of that family, and he's not a good person. He keeps this is one of those other things where he keeps repeating the same line over and over and over again, where he's just like, "Take it easy, don't worry, you'll be safe soon, you're safe now," and does it for like so so long. Um, he also manages to incapacitate someone with a broomstick much more efficiently than anyone could possibly be incapacitated with a broomstick. No, it's true. And it's not even the hard end of the broomstick. That's the thing. I'm like, yeah. like the Wizard of Oz, like the Wicked Witch of the West is like rolling in her grave being like, yes, finally. Um, it, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Yeah. 
He incapacitates, and then he continues to do use the broomstick and like the soft end, hitting her while they're in his truck, going yeah. back to Leatherface's house. Yeah. So they they get back there, um, and the hitchhiker's there. He's grabbing roadkill, um, and uh, Drayton calls him a nap haired idiot. Starts hitting him with the broomstick. Mm-hmm. And I told you to stay away from the graveyard. So was this their dad? Um, I thought he was their dad. It turns out he's their older brother. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I thought so he was. These are things uh, that the this is these are things that the world wants to know. So thank God. Yeah. No. We're like not until yeah not until we not until Wikipedia um did I learn like well, I did a deep dive into Texas Chainsaw Massacre like a couple. God, a couple years ago, um, that I learned that that's actually their older brother. Because I, for the longest time, was convinced that was their dad. Yeah. No, I was, too. He looks like their dad. Yeah. Um, so, they drag her into the house, and uh, he's, look what your brother did to the door. He's got no pride in his house. And uh, so, they I missed they that line entirely, which is... Oh, yeah. I wanted to say, too, while, while, um, while he's chasing her through the woods... Right, the woods are all full of like shrubbery and brush and like thorns and like mm-hmm. really unkempt um, weeds and twigs and all that stuff. And he starts in order to get to her, like chainsawing a bunch of the like wood and stuff. And I'm like, oh, good, he's he's putting the chainsaw to good use. Good, yes, yeah. we love that. Um, so yeah, she's in. She's in the fucking. She's in the house. They take the, um, what is it? They have, like, a potato sack over her head. They take it off. Yeah. And um, they say they're going to give her dinner soon. And yeah. she's screaming. And then Liberty Mutual is like, Liberty, Liberty, Liberty. And um... <laughs> I also say, you know, he has a very, they have a very tasteful skeleton lamp that they have her next to. Yes. Yes. They yes. have a skeleton lamp. And then overhanging is, like, a skin lamp. Um, over yeah. overhanging the dining room table. Um, I don't know. I mean, like, I'd be scared if I was the actress. I think that she did a phenomenal job in this scene. Mm-hmm. I do. Um, I've, probably... I've, I have always been bothered by how much screaming she does. I find there is annoying. too much screaming in this movie. There's too much. So my mother is like out here. My mother and like Errol and I are watching in the living room. And my mother is out here writing invitations to my brother's girlfriend's baby shower, right? And mm. then, um, and she's like, Jesus fucking Christ, can someone shut that bitch up? She's <laughs> <You're> screaming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, so they spend a good, it feels like fucking five minutes to get the grandpa down the stairs. I know it's not five minutes, but it feels like it takes about that long. It feels like an hour. Yeah. And, so, and uh, Grandpa's alive. Yeah, and he starts sucking the uh, blood out of her finger, which, like as I said, they really cut uh, Marilyn Burns' finger. So he, that um, actor is really sucking her finger. Yeah, that actor is really sucking her blood, yeah. That's not sanitary. Um, but anyway, I mean, I get it. Indie filmmaking. But, um... I mean, I'm not. I, I I can't claim I've never sucked anyone's blood. So, oh well, I'm know. definitely I've definitely done that, but like on the yeah. fly, like something like yeah. that, that seems a little much. But again, we were not alive then. Yeah. Um, the uh, also it's completely huge. Also, what the fuck about this movie? How is that person still alive? How is the grandfather alive? That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It does not make. He literally like. I don't know. There's, I don't think you've seen this, but there's a character in SpongeBob SquarePants. Um, yeah, I've never seen who's it. Who's like this old, tiny, like million year old little fish lady who's mm-hmm. like upset about chocolate. Mm-hmm. And SpongeBob's trying to sell chocolate and she's like, Chocolate? I remember when they first invented chocolate. I always hated it. And then, no, it wasn't SpongeBob, but someone's trying to sell chocolate as like a rejuvenation thing for your skin and she buys the mm-hmm. whole thing. But anyway, she looks like this shriveled up prune where there's no way she's alive. I get that it's a cartoon, but that's the grandfather in this movie. Yeah. But how the fuck is this person alive? Yeah, well... And no. he's the greatest killer of all time. He was, because he's not a very good killer in this movie anymore. He can't hold the knife or the sledgehammer. No, the hammer. The hammer, the hammer. The yeah. Sledgehammer. He, yeah. He can't do it. Yeah. 
So, shut up, you bitch hog. That was, uh, that's, that's my, uh. That's Shakespeare. I'm just yes. kidding. <laughs> that is not Shakespeare. I'm sorry. William, no. William Shakespeare's Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That would be such a better film. <laughs> you know, uh, especially, especially being that he would have written it how many centuries before Texas was discovered? <laughs> or, or I'm sorry, not discovered, taken from Mexico. Um, yes. Yep. 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 You know, but uh, yeah, so they start fighting amongst themselves, um, and eventually they, they decide to let Grandpa do it. And uh, eventually, they Grandpa drops. Yep. Eventually, Grandpa drops the hammer enough that uh, she takes the time to run and does her second window jump. Yes. And she goes to the road. Yeah. She runs to the road, and uh, we have the hitchhiker and Leatherface like running after her. And somehow she, like, is able to do it. She's able to do it and get to the road. And conveniently now, there are people actually driving on this road where we have never seen another car before. Yeah. yeah. I had no problem with, with the trucker, but the fact that then a moment later, there's a guy in a pickup always bothered me. That makes sense. You also never learn what happens to the trucker. Yeah, he kind of just disappears. He does. He's kind of just, yeah. Like, you just, like, but, the, no, the big issue with me was mm -hmm. that they could have just driven off in the truck, in the Big Mac yeah. truck, and they didn't, yeah. they left out the passenger side thing and started running when he only had a wrench. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I'm like, drive, you fucking idiots. What are you doing? Yeah, well, you know, as I said, they otherwise, then you wouldn't have gotten the chance to see, um... You know, Leatherface's uh, interpretive dance at the end of the film with the That's chainsaw, the most gorgeous. which is so Sally lives. Yeah, which is a very iconic shot, honestly, of him doing the and dance with the chainsaw and her and, in the back yeah. of the pickup truck. Her in the back of the yeah. pickup truck, huge iconic thing. Yeah, where she, uh, yeah, where she goes, she starts screaming, but then the screaming turns into laughter. Yeah, yep, and then his dance at the end, absolutely iconic. But you watch the movie and you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. And the movie's um, still making a shit ton of money, I assume. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. I mean, you know, it's it's just it by the way, the uh the hitchhiker um his corpse is referred to as nubbins in uh part two, which is why I think that could just be a nickname. Nubbins. So he dies? He got hit by oh, the, yeah, the truck. Oh, yeah, he got hit by the truck. He got hit by the truck. Duh. Yeah. Yeah. But also, he got run over by the truck, so his corpse has to be in pieces. Um, It's not in good condition in part two. <laughs> I will not watch part two, okay? <laughs> no. Part two is amazing. Part two, part two is brilliant because here's the thing. Toby Hooper didn't want to make the same type of movie over and over again. He felt that, like... Halloween 2 and fucking um, Friday the 13th just kind of repeated. Part 2 is a dark comedy. Part 2 is like campy and over the top. And it's like, there's a reason why Bill Mosley is such a big name in horror. Because as, as the, uh, the other brother, Chop Top, who was in Vietnam during, uh, during Texas Chainsaw Massacre... Um, He's just amazing, and like, and there's a weird love story with fucking Le Leatherface falling for like the uh, the main girl of the film. Okay, maybe I'll watch it. Yeah, we're like Leatherface doesn't want to kill her because he obviously has a crush. Um, and uh, yeah, and Drayton returns, mm -hmm. and you uh, Drayton is winning um a chili contest all around Texas. Ew. Yes, yes, that it's actually uh, their victims that they've been making in the chili. Makes sense. It's very sweet yeah. shot of them. And uh, Dennis Hopper is in is in uh, that one too. Um, Maybe I'll watch is, it if ever I want to like like smoke weed and hate myself for a minute. Yeah, I'll enjoy it even more. <laughs> it's um yeah no I absolutely I absolutely one hundred percent love. Um, part, part two. Wild. Yeah. I, like, I, I cannot, you know, um, 
But yeah, no, Dennis Hopper is Sally and Franklin's uncle. And he's a he's a uh, Texas Ranger. And there's a fucking chainsaw duel at the end of the movie where he goes after the family. That's miraculous. Yeah, and it's him and Leatherface doing a fucking duel with chainsaws. Well, okay, I, I'm sold. I'm so old. Yeah. I'm gonna sleep tonight, but maybe tomorrow after work. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, I a hundred percent recommend anyone to watch Texas Chainsaw Massacre too. Um, it's it's just, and the fact that it's the same director and that he just wanted to do something completely different if he was going to do a sequel. Um, I respect yeah. that so fucking much because. So many directors would have literally just been, it's just a different group of teenagers find themselves in the house this time. Yeah, you're right. Be because, it, because, in fact, so many of the other Texas Chainsaw Massacre sequels are exactly that. Yep. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, it's I, I cannot recommend Part 2 more. Um, part 2 is my, you know, we're going we're gonna to touch on the remake next week. Which, uh, you know, I've said many times, I think is one of the, the 20 best horror films of the 2000s. Um, I fucking love that movie. Yeah, yeah. Like, our, our episode's going to be so much longer next week. Because we're, we're pretty much done. <laughs> like, you know? No, we're um, we didn't even take a break. Yeah, you know. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, like, uh, we're going to be talking about that next week. But, uh I will say, um, out of the original uh, continuity, um, which has... Because uh, here's the weird thing about Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Texas Chainsaw Massacre reboots pretty much every fucking sequel, except for part two. Huh, that's so interesting. Because part three kind of pretends part two didn't happen. Is it a different director? Uh, yes. Embarrassing. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then the then um and Texas Chainsaw Massacre the next generation no one knows where that even fits in the continuity of any of them. That's the one Matthew McConaughey and Renee Zellweger before they were stars. Okay, that's Errol was bringing that up too. He was just like, "Oh, so you're going to talk about the remake? Is that the one with Matthew McConaughey?" I was like, "No." But I didn't yeah, know no. what the fuck he was talking about. Yeah, no, it's technically part of uh, 4. And uh um, uh, he plays uh, what is his name, Vilmer, who is another one, who is another brother in the family. Um, there's so many brothers. Yeah, no, there's a ton of brothers in the family. Um, and uh, according to the video game, there's also two sisters, but we never met them. Um, but we do meet one sister in uh in part four. Um, oh. who is actually who is actually like a professional businesswoman. Um, who's like, I think she's like a real estate agent or something. And like, no one suspects she's a member of the family. Um, cause like one of the, one of the, uh, Renee Zellweger's character goes to her, goes like for help when she sees this like professional looking woman driving. And, uh, she takes her back, she takes her back to the house. I hate that. I think I have to watch all of this now. I really didn't want to. <laughs> I will, well, I'll tell you like, you don't have to watch part three. <laughs> um, okay. Part three is not good. Um, part you know, and then of course there is Texas Chainsaw, um, which you know, there's so many. Like yeah, like like Errol and, was. And, I keep talking, bringing up Errol, and he was so overwhelmed. Like, which one is it? <laughs> yeah, and then there's the one that was on Netflix, which um, they they pulled the Halloween thing again where they pretend that none of the other sequels happened except for part one, um, where Sally is now a sheriff in that one or some shit, even though they didn't get, um, they didn't get, uh, the, you know, uh, the original yeah, actress, because she passed away. Yeah, she passed away, uh -huh. so they couldn't get her. Um, but yeah, no, it becomes a mess after, uh, watch part two, watch the remake, and then ignore the rest of them. That's really my advice for the fucking... Yeah, like, let me see. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten movies in the franchise. Damn. Yeah. And that was the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> yep. 
Yep. <laughs> and in fact, what's funny is there's the 10, and then there's ones that never got made. There's a whole, uh, there's a movie called Butcher Boys, which was actually a, uh, a, it was written as a sequel, and then something happened, and it just became a different horror movie. Um, that goes into like, uh, like uh, the cities in Texas. Oh. And in that one, there's a whole like fucking, uh, building that, um, after all the shit happened, this cannibal family moves into and they just like make the, they have the entire building where they like torture and like rape and cannibalize people. <laughs> what the fuck? And yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, and then there was um, Bill Mosley had written a script that um, was basically chopped up in prison after Texas Chainsaw Massacre two, and then I think they never got the funding for that or something. He could still do it. You know, um, uh, there's a documentary about it on um, on uh, Tubi. Oh, cool. Send it to so, me. So, so, yeah, but no, the whole fucking franchise is a mess at, at this point. Um, yeah. So I, I, literally, I recommend watch, watch 2 and then watch the remake and then you're good. <laughs> and then you're done. <laughs> yes, okay, you don't have to watch the other eight films. You really don't. The one on Netflix <laughs> recently t- takes place now. And it's the one where fucking Leatherface... It's literally like what they did with Halloween, because Leatherface is like 70 in it. Oh. And it's like a bunch of like fucking TikTokers um, are going to buy a town and, re- and like gentrify it. And Leatherface lives there. And uh, there's the scene where he goes into like the party bus and uh, one of them is like, dude, you are so canceled. And then he like kills everybody with, chain- with a chainsaw. Did you watch this? I did. I did watch it. Um, it's it's oddly and sadly not the worst one. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not going to say it's good. It is not good. But it is not the worst one. And that is, that is a sad indictment on the franchise. But... I will tell you, the franchise gets rebooted so much that literally when, when my friends were complaining about it, I actually would tell them, don't even bother worrying about it because you know when they make the next one, this one's not going to be, it's not even going to be in the canon anymore. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So, you know, that's, uh, <laughs> that's, uh, what goes yeah. on with that. That's, yeah. That's, wow, fuck. Okay, good. I know yeah. what my homework assignment is. And you know yes, what we're we'll covering next week. <laughs> yep, and watch, seriously, watch two and then get back to me on that, because I actually think you might actually love two. Well, no, I mean, like, maybe I'll just touch on two while we talk about the remake. Yeah. It would be really yeah. fun. But, uh, anyway, uh, that was our podcast about the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Massacre. Yeah, thank you for... Because they took my baby away from me. <laughs> From May, yes. Now I'm gonna yes. listen to that song too. But thank you for joining us. Sorry we didn't really care for this movie very much. But next week, I mean, like I personally just absolutely love it, and I can't wait to talk about it. Yeah. So uh, why don't you? Uh, I'm gonna go fuck. I took a Mucinex, so that's why my nose is so fucking runny right now. I've been like Mucinex. Yeah, is good ca- for you. So in case, yeah, in case anyone thinks I'm snorting coke when I go off and like you hear snorting sounds, it's literally me fucking. Like wiping snot away from my fucking nose. I mean, like I feel like that's much more realistic. Like you know, <laughs> it's okay. You know, you forget. Yeah. We're, we're, but uh, we're why don't set. you tell them? Why don't you tell them where to find us, Chelsea? While I do that. Okay, go do that <sighs> quietly. I'm just kidding. Anyway, um, uh, again, I'm Chelsea Lestage. You can find me at Chelsea Lestage on Instagram, and you can find Charles at Charles D Lincoln on Instagram. <laughs> And then you can find us together. Together! <laughs> at CL Square Productions on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. And we will keep bringing to you um, our reviews of, or these autopsies of these movies. And we will see you next week with uh, the remake of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And I'm really fucking excited if you didn't know.
And I and I do want to I do want to thank everyone who's actually been uh, listening and watching us for now. This is our fiftieth fucking episode. It is. Yep. So this is episode fifty. Yeah, yeah. So thank you for being there for us, and uh, you know, stay tuned for uh, the next fifty. I guess. Yes. (laughs) So yes. You know, we love you so much. I'm gonna go. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> All right, so uh, we'll see you uh, next time. Uh, take care, we'll see folks. See you next week. Happy Halloween forever. Bye. <laughs>